What I'd like to talk about today in my talk is um, kind of launching off on the talk I gave uh, to the Great Mountain, uh, Great Mountain Zen Center about a week and a half ago. And uh, it's, it's on the Rinzai's true person of no rank. Um, one or two of you were, were, were present at that. And uh, I'm, I'm not gonna, it's not exactly the same talk. There'll be some new material. There, it might be all new actually. I'm not exactly sure where, where I'm gonna go with it. But um, for those who were there, I know Miosh and you were, um, and anyone who's seen that online, there'll be uh, and probably some different twists tonight. Now, I want, I want to name something that's just heavy on my heart right now is um, the transphobia that's really up and activated throughout, throughout this country. Um, and as, as most of you know, I have a trans daughter, uh, stepdaughter, and uh, she's, she's terrified. You know, she's terrified of being in, in society. Um, in a place that is, you know, so many people are actively uh, demonizing, you know, trans people, deep, deep, deep ignorance, misunderstanding, ill will, you know, towards them. And it's, uh, I mean, it's already difficult for her to be in her body, you know, because of the confusion, you know, and the process of transformation you know, that she's going through in order to be authentic. And then to, to add to that, you know, the social shaming and aggression uh, towards her is just, it's heartbreaking. And it's enraging, to be honest. I mean, the way this is being weaponized by political forces, people with, you know, interests in gaining political power and using it as a tool to get more power for themselves is, uh, it's frankly disgusting. Um, so I wanna, just wanna name that. You know, it, it pertains to my talk tonight too about the, the true person of no rank. You know, when we're really authentic, you know, we can't hold on to our, righteousness around what we, our, our ideas around what we think is right, right or wrong. You know, we have to look at the effect of our beliefs and our behaviors and our words. So yeah, it's an important matter. The true person of no rank Master Rinzai addressed the assembly saying, on your lump of red flesh, there is a true person of no rank, always leaving and entering the gates of your face. You beginners who have not witnessed the true person, look, look. Thereupon a monk asked, how about this true person of no rank? Rinzai got down from the seat and grabbed him. The monk hesitated. And Rinzai pushed him away saying, this true person of no rank, what a shit stick he is. Yeah, so we have, the, we have these credentials that we carry around with us. Right? These, these roles, these uh, definitions, these, these positions that we've internalized as being very important qualities, you know, represent qualities and what we have. And Master Inzai is, is quite clear that this is not, you know, our deepest, most authentic selves. And this is something artificial, you know, conditioned that's added on to our understanding and really gets in the way of our true responsiveness to other people and situations. Right? It's the it happens very subtly. We, we walk into a room and we'll be immediately making valuations, right? This person's very attractive. This person's not so attractive. This person's charismatic. This person's not charismatic. Um, this person's got some power perhaps over me. This person doesn't. 
And then our subtle energies get drawn to or away from those qualities that we've ascribed to people. Right? And kind of immediately position ourselves in accordance with these things. We may think that we're beyond that. You know, those of us who have done a lot of practice, spiritual practice over the years, we may think that we're beyond that. You know, we really see all beings as equal. But really, really? I mean, when we, when we pull out of the parking lot, you know, at Lucky's Market and you see the, the family, the woman with her, her three children and, and the stroller with her sign of cardboard, you know, asking for help. You know, is there, is there a subtle, a subtle judgment of less than that we apply. And you see the homeless person walking down the street. You know, is that so, there's that subtle judgment of less than. We might have compassion, of course. I hope we do. But do we also have that judgment of less than? <clears throat> In our uh, social relations at work, you know, and in our communities and in our friend relations, you know, these these ranks are are just you know permeating our understanding and our self understanding. It's it's really it's almost like the fabric of a lot of social rel relations are based on these ranks. You know, certain professionally, everybody wants to know you know, where they are in the hierarchy, they want to know what the path of promotion is in, in a lot of, in a lot of cases, you know, there's a, there's a path of promotion and greater responsibility, greater compensation, greater authority, all of those things. And it's considered higher. And it's just, it's just part of the nature of things to, to think in that way. Family relations can be the same way, but family has a way of detonating those ranks from the inside. Uh, I've been learning to, uh, to grow in family and to operate in family for the last few years as I you know, married into a large family of five kids. And so, I've seen how I naturally carry forward a sense of, well, I'm older and wiser and more mature and more educated than my kids. And so perhaps deserving a certain amount of respect or, uh, you know, at least a hearing, a respectful hearing <laughs> on my ideas or my feelings even. And uh, I, I have a great teacher's especially in the three teenagers who uh, don't owe me a damn thing. <laughs> and uh, you know, don't see me as being higher or special in any way. And they you know, usually quite lovingly uh, ignore me <laughs> oftentimes. And it's, and it's been a wonderful lesson in not being attached to rank. <clears throat> When we practice in, in retreat, this is a great opportunity to, to practice actualizing the true person of no rank. Because we're all with ourselves. We're all turning into ourselves. That's where the real work is, right? Because the rank is always outward looking. It's always comparative to other people. But the practice is inwardly turned to the internal universe, to the internal cosmos of yourself. And you study this internal cosmos of the self without comparison to anything else, any, anybody else. 
So there's no opportunity really, or at least we diminish our opportunities, uh, our engagement with others in that way to bring in rank. Now in, in our Zen form, you know, we, we have a certain amount of very strict role definition. It's part of the discipline. It's part of the strictness of our form of Zen practice. So we have teachers and we have service positions and we have tantos, uh, you know, senior student roles. And the retreat unfolds according to these role definitions in, in terms of the external forms. But internally, there's no ranks. We're exploring the true person. So each of the roles, each of the ranks, if you will, are just a form that awareness is taking in any given moment. So you say, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm awareness. Uh, gyodoing. And then at the moment, I'm gyodoing as the teacher. And you're, you are solving as a listener or as a student. It's not definitive. It just happens to be the position that you're in it at a certain moment. When you can move through relational, different relations fluidly without being fixed on them. When you're the teacher, teach. When you're the student, study. When you're the chant leader, lead the chant. When you're the boss, be the boss. When you're the follower, be the follower. It's beautiful. It feels great. And don't attach to it. Don't think that defines you. It doesn't define you. Nothing defines you definitively, fixedly. Hmm. So we have a, um, a subtle temptation to make the true person of no rank be the highest rank. Right? Surely the true person of no rank is better than the false person who's attached to rank. So that's a spiritual sickness. In fact, the true person of no rank isn't separate from the false person who's attached to rank. And that's clear in this account from Master Rinzai. The monk comes up and says, well, what about this true person with no rank? Who is he? Show me, right? Rinzai is so disappointed and even angry with them because he's immediately looking outward and asking Rinzai, to explain this true person to him. When Rinzai just said, this true person is constantly coming in and going through the portals of your face. Look, look, look there, don't look at me. <laughs> and the monk immediately looks at, looks at him. And Rinzai gets really frustrated and shakes him and goes, ah, this true person of no rank, what a shit stick he is. True person of no rank and shit stick, same. You know, not, I shouldn't say same, not separate. It's the true person of no rank, shit sticking as a kind of a, you know, buffoon, a black empty or a black lacquer pot, as the teachers used to call the, you know, the, the dull students or a student in a moment of dullness. But still, the true person of no rank is present. And true person of no rank is always present. 
coming and going through the portals of your face, the sensory experience, the sights, the sounds, the smells, the tastes, the touch, the thoughts, Do we ever not have sensory experience? You know, that's how we uh, have cognition. So that's the level that the true person is working at. Immediate experience. when we return over and over and over again to the immediacy of direct experience. We start to see our ideas as being extra. We start to see how they're operating as filters. That's the look, look that Rinzai says we can actually see clearly and almost as a whole what we've been doing with our minds. And I'm sure that many of us here in this group have had those moments of insight where you see clearly what you've been doing, what you've been creating. It can be quite um, bracing, you know, quite shocking, sometimes um, troubling to see the world that you created, the reality that you created by putting yourself in a certain position with respect to others. You have, may have, have a moment of insight where a whole relationship you know, that you've built perhaps even over many years, you see have, have been based on a false idea about yourself or you know, and the other person, usually they go hand in hand. And when you have that kind of breakthrough experience, the whole basis of that relationship can fall away in an instant. And then all the energy and the juice is gone. You know, oftentimes a combination of fear, um, craving, desire for control. All of those are kind of the fuel for our rank making mind. But when we drop those, those attachments to the, to the positions and definitions, it's very liberating and it, it can be very chastening too. It's like, holy cow, how much time did I spend, did I waste, you know, on that? All the energy I wasted on that. And then a sense of freedom, you know, arises not to do that. It's, it's, it's very distasteful. I mean, literally to, to, to oneself to recognize some of what you've been creating. You can almost let me leave a bad taste in your mouth. It's like, oh gosh. And then we don't want to keep doing that. There was, there was a, a time, um, in my youth, it was in middle school. Uh, I shared this in the in the previous talk. When um, I, I I now, upon reflection, decades later, recognize as, as a seed of of a powerful rank making in my own soul, if you will, my own personality at least. Um, it was in middle school, and I had done really well academically through elementary school. I was getting these sort of advanced programs that they were putting me in sixth grade and fifth grade and 
I got into seventh grade and you start getting grades, you know, so it becomes really clear, you know, who's, who's smarter than the others, right? An A is better than a B is better than a C. And I, you know, I, I did well because I was motivated to do well in school, but I got like an A minus in something. And, and then some, somebody else close to me, it was either a bro my brother or it might've been a friend, you know, got an A in that same class. And I can remember the feeling in my body. I was terrified. It was like, holy cow, they're, he's better than me. He's, he's better than me. This, this isn't gonna stand. I mean, I can't let this happen. And it was uh, terror, actually. You know, those words didn't go through my head. I'm let, putting those on, but the, the terror, uh, I, I, I remember now vividly, I've been able to recover it. And so I, I know that that was one moment in a season of my life when it became very important to me to do well academically. So I was a really good student and I did really well and I ended up going to an Ivy League college and getting a fellowship and getting, you know, a graduate degree at the University of Chicago and a fellowship and all this, you know, academic success. And I know, I, I know now that I was largely fueled. I was gonna say partly fueled, but probably largely fueled, not entirely fueled, largely fueled by this, um, need to be uh you know accomplished in that way yeah that may, yeah maybe partially maybe is a better way to put it because i was really curious i really enjoyed what i was doing really enjoyed it. when i when i lost interest in the subject I, I i i no longer had a need to kind of be validated in that way so it did diminish somewhat but still that rank making mind that attachment to rank comes from really deep innocent young parts of ourselves and, and we have to see those parts and love those parts in order to release our our grip on our ranks it's it's the only way actually to do it because we can't shame ourselves into dropping our ranks when we get into oh the rankless person is so much worse than the true person of no rank and that just starts the whole thing going again oh well, there's a um there's a a later story that uh, brings in this koan, and it happened a, a number of years later. I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't have the how how much later after Rinzai, but this koan of the true person of no rank had become part of the koan curriculum, and there was a woman whose name was Yu, and she was a donut maker in the town, and she used to visit the Zen master Lang Ya and ask him questions along with everyone else. Now you can imagine she, she's, she's, she's a lower rank person in this situation. She's a lay person, she's a woman, and she's a donut maker. So like, what is she? Wow, great that they even allowed her in the monastery, right? But Master Lang Ya obviously was quite, you know, inclusive. Thank God. So she'd come and ask questions, and the master gave her the the uh, true person of no rank koan to work on. So one day she heard a street musician singing a pop song about lotus flowers, and the lyrics of the song were apparently, "If you haven't heard her song, how can you find the lake?" She heard these words, and she was instantly and greatly enlightened. She threw her donut pan onto the ground. Now her husband was right there and he turns to her and says, are you crazy? And she says, this isn't your department. Then she went to see her teacher and Lang Ya, seeing her from a distance could tell that she had had a huge breakthrough. And he asked her right away, what is the true person of no rank? And she immediately said, there's someone 
of no rank with six arms and three heads, working furiously, smashing flower mountain into two with a single blow. For 10,000 years, the flowing water doesn't know the source. After that, she became a famous teacher herself. Her breakthrough comes not from sitting in meditation, although she obviously did a lot of meditation, but it comes from hearing the lyrics of a pop song. And then something just landed for something just about being deeply and, and intimately and vastly human. Just this, this amazing jewel of experience that all of us possess, this microcosm. Amazing, vast mind that animates all of us. And she contacted it just like that. And then, you know, her husband is like, what's going on with you? And he's like, this is in your department. <laughs> so I like that. You know, a lot of, a lot of the times our, our ranking mind are like, that's not my job, you know, you know, this is your job and that's your job and this is my job. And here she's, she's kind of saying something like that. <laughs> this, this isn't your department. <laughs> you know, even from, even from seeing this no, person of no rank, he's like, yeah, but you don't. And we're not going to be able to have a productive conversation with this. I, I need to go and talk to someone who's in right relation with this, someone who I can really meet on this. That's not a rank, that's, that's just relational integrity and authenticity. This isn't your department. And then she meets him with this, you know, very Zen kind of expression of the flower mountain being burst in two. Six arms and three heads working furiously. That's how powerful the true person of no rank is, how vital, how vibrant, how alive moment by moment within sensory experience. It's a very dynamic, right? It's very dynamic. It's, it's so dynamic that you can't fix any rank or position on it. Always changing. It's one of the, I think, the access points into this quality of awareness is to always be attuned to the shiftingness of your sensory experience and also the shiftingness of your relational experience. Yeah, for those of you who are in a partner relation, you know, married or otherwise, you, 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 know, you can go through, say, an, an argument or an intense period where the relations between you can shift, you know, minute by minute, even moment by moment sometimes over the course of a discussion. You know, to be attuned to those, to those relations and how it's, how they're moving, you know, then you can you know, you can identify, you know, when you're in need, for example, and then when you have the capacity to meet your partner's need. And just having some awareness of this is, you know, the most important thing, you know, then there's the relational skills that we can develop once you, once you see that and then how to work with that and communicate with that results and good wisdom around that. But just seeing how they shift is the most important thing. <clears throat> the, the, the true person of no rank kind of inhabits what I, what I call sacred aloneness. And I realized after my talk at Great Mountain, 
that uh, I had titled the talk Sacred Aloneness and the True Person of No Rank, and I didn't say anything about sacred aloneness. Um, it was after the fact, but that, that, that's okay. That's just how it unfolded. But I just wanted to note the way that it has come alive for me is that the, the, the rank making mind is, is so much about um, other people and the comparisons with other people. You know, I said that a few, a few minutes ago. And it's essential to really just look at ourselves without comparison to others, to be in that place. And so when, when we just take ourselves um, physically out of, you know, out of places of relation, and then just taking ourselves out of the field of those relational fields that are oftentimes, you know, laced with rank. So to, to go into a Zendo and to do a practice space like this, where it's dedicated to that turning inward, that's, that's essential. to spend time with yourself in that way. So in, in, in the midst of family life or in, in the midst of professional life, um, it's difficult um, to really be fully open and fully unactivated. Um, when everybody else in the entire society, community, and groups are all full of position and rank, it's difficult. So we have to we have to take ourselves into a sacred aloneness, a place of sacred aloneness, and and allow all of that to play out in our bodies. just to be with it without any judgment without any trying to fix anything or analyze it just to be yourself to be all one right it's sacred all oneness is really what sacred aloneness is it's all oneness but it has to be rooted and seeded at the core of your own awareness. So that's Rinzai's guidance. Look, look. And that's our Zazen. Just look inside. It's so vast and so rich and so you perfectly. <laughs>